What's up guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. In this week's episode, we are going to continue chipping away at the Cayman engine build. Stay tuned. For those of you who are not aware, uh, we blew our Cayman engine up. It's a 2006 Cayman S with the M97 in it. Spun a rod bearing. Uh, I'll post links down below and at the end to the playlist of us disassembling that engine and finding out exactly what went wrong. But anyway, in order to replace it, uh, well, it was gonna be an obscene amount of money to just buy one off the shelf. So we decided, what the hell, we'll build it ourselves. Never built a Porsche flat six before, but not gonna let that stop us. We found an M96 out of a 996, 911. Uh, that has been sleeved and bored to a 3.8 liter now. We're using uh, fully forged internals, Carrillo rods, JE pistons, and the pistons have the correct dish and everything for boost because that's right, we're throwing a big turbo on this thing. What I'm gonna do today is file fit the rings and get them installed on the pistons. In order to do that, you have to do a little bit of math. So the rings come with uh, an instruction page, obviously, and it tells you exactly what the gaps need to be for the rings. So the top ring is supposed to be bore times 50 thou, and the second ring is supposed to be bore times 55 thou. So when we do that math, we come up with uh, 20 thou uh, end gap for the top and 22 thou for the second ring. The oil ring just says it's supposed to have a minimum of 15 thou. I'm gonna start with the top ring here. And what you wanna do is drop this down into the cylinder. And then you can use your piston to make sure that it is perfectly square in the bore. And you'll see that there is a gap right there and that's the end gap that you're measuring. So I have my feeler gauges here. The top ring, like I said, should be 20 thou. The bottom or the second ring should be 22 thou. So I need to see if this 20 thou feeler gauge will fit in there, which believe it or not, it actually does and it's perfect. I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that it was perfect. I don't think that's ever happened to me before. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder if Vision Motorsports uh, filed these things for us, but it sure doesn't look like it, so I don't know. Interesting. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, second ring. Same story here. We're going to drop this in, square it up with the piston, and check our gap. This one does not look like it's going to be right. 22 thou. Yeah, so this one's gonna have to be filed down and I'll show you how to do that. This is my piston ring filer. It's just an old school manual one. Uh, they're super easy to use. A lot of people will go ahead and push the ring all the way together against this stone and then turn it and then you're taking material off both. You're not technically supposed to do that, but you do want to make sure that you keep this edge, whichever one you're gonna do, as square as possible against the cutting stone. So we're going to start just by taking a few turns of material off and then we'll recheck uh, our tolerances and we'll just keep going back and forth. As you can see, still nice and square, which is what you want. Now back here at cylinder number one, Put this guy in, square it up, and let's check it. And we are good. If anything, I may have done one or two turns too many. Uh, the feeler gauge isn't quite as tight as I'd like it to be, but it's pretty much right there. I'll keep that in mind next time I uh, go to turn the rings down. That's the top and second ring done. Let's take a look at the oil control ring. The instructions state that the oil control ring should just have at least 15 thou of clearance. You can put this in here and you can pretty much immediately see that it does. Pretty close to that 20 mark, I would guess. Maybe even 25 thou. All right, those look good. Next, we need to get the rings on the pistons themselves. All right, so the first ring we're gonna put on is the oil control ring. 
Uh, it's probably not going to be easy to see on camera, but this piece has raised edges on the top and bottom that uh, allow the steel rings to kind of hold this thing in place. So we're going to put this on first and it's super easy. Just put it in its groove and then walk it around. And then we'll move on to the steel top and bottom rings for the oil control ring. What you want to do is, you can obviously see there's the gap right here. You want to space the gap out on this, one inch to the right and one inch to the left to make sure that you don't get a bunch of blow by. And again, put that in the groove and walk it around. And there we have one gap here and one gap there, about an inch apart. Just repeat for the top. One ring complete. Now we'll move on to the second ring. And what I probably should be doing here is using a piston ring expander instead of spiral winding this thing on. Don't tell anyone. There you have it. Easy stuff. Lastly, we'll do the top ring and again, we'll try to spread the gap out and I just turn it 180 degrees from the other. rings are on. Now because we measured and filed these rings in cylinder number one we want to make sure that this piston goes back into cylinder number one so we're just gonna mark it right on top. Only five more to go. If you have not already entered our 5,000 subscriber giveaway, make sure and click that first link below and do that to win some cool stuff from Flat 6 Motorsports, Soul Performance Products, and Racing. On top of getting the piston rings filed and installed, one of the things that's been keeping us from really moving along on this project is we don't know what we have and what we don't. When we bought this replacement engine, it was completely disassembled and we got boxes of parts that are not easily identifiable. So luckily, one of our subscribers, and you know who you are and I greatly appreciate this, uh, is a Porsche tech and was able to go on and get full parts explosions for the entire M96 engine. So what's that mean? I'm gonna have to go through line by line by line and look at all the parts that we have and check off what we do and don't have and then make a list of things that still need to be purchased, which is real scary because I have a feeling that anything with a Porsche part number tagged to it is gonna be real expensive. What I'm focused on today is merely stuff for the short block because, well, we need to get that assembled before we can do anything else. And the heads are mostly complete. So like I said, this engine diagram goes through and it will tell you, oh, a crankcase half, a crankshaft retaining block, a, this bolt, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I gotta go through. I have a bit of a mess but I was able to find quite a bit more stuff than I thought I was gonna be able to, which is great news. One of my main areas of concern was the entire timing assembly. Intermediate shaft, timing chain, all the tensioners, etc. We're obviously gonna to have to buy a new timing chain, but it's there. All the tensioners are there, they need to be inspected. The intermediate shaft, the crank housing or block, whatever you wanna call it. All the camshafts are in here a bunch of ancillary bits in there and there. This is all of the lifters for the car and all being in one bag like that, uh, obviously not great. Those are each gonna have to be pretty carefully inspected and we may end up just having to buy all new lifters if these are scratched up. We have a just massive amount of bolts that are still gonna have to be gone through piece by piece. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. We've got stock rods and pistons if anybody wants some 911 pistons. Obviously a pretty brief update today, but there's just not a lot that can be done until we order all those parts. Obviously every single gasket has to be replaced. Any of the wear components have to be replaced. We have to get all of the main bearings and rod bearings, etc. That's gonna be probably the first thing we order so that we can go ahead and get the crankshaft in the rotating assembly block, get the stuff we need for the intermediate shaft and the timing chain, and then really we should be able to start assembling the case halves, which that'll be an exciting day. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.